Imagine feeling every frustration, every joy and every fear 10 times stronger than anyone else. For millions with ADHD and autism, their brains turn up the volume on emotions and there's no off switch. This isn't about being overly sensitive or overreacting. It's neurological reality. Today, we're going to explore why it happens, what the science tells us and what it means for daily life. I'm Tomasz and this is Clinical Breakdown. Emotional dysregulation is incredibly common in ADHD and autism. It can predict anxiety, depression, burnout and difficulties in relationships. For decades, clinicians and educators focus mostly on attention, hyperactivity or social skills. But the brain's ability to manage emotions is just as important. Recent research shows differences in key areas of the brain. The amygdala, prefrontal cortex and limbic circuits that generate and regulate emotions. Understanding this can change how we support neurodiverse individuals at school, at work and at home. Let's break down what the science shows. The amygdala is responsible for generating emotional intensity. The prefrontal cortex acts like a brakes to dampen those feelings. And limbic system helps integrate emotions with memory and social context. In ADHD, the amygdala tends to react strongly and quickly to emotional stimuli, while the prefrontal cortex is slower to regulate, which makes emotions peak higher and last longer. In autism, amygdala activity can be atypical, sometimes hyperactive, sometimes underactive, depending on situation. On top of that, sensory overload, like a loud noise, a bright light or touch, can make emotions feel even more intense. What all this means is that minor triggers, things that might barely affect neurotypical person can feel overwhelming. Social interactions, unexpected changes or even small mistakes can trigger emotional storms. This isn't personality, it's the way the brain is wired. Over time, this constant amplification can lead to burnout, chronic anxiety and even challenges with identity. Of course, we should be careful with interpretation. Most of those studies are correlational. Lab conditions are not the same as real life and individual differences are huge. Not everyone with ADHD or autism experiences emotions the same way. But what those findings do tell us is that emotional intensity is real, measurable and rooted in the brain. So what does this mean for understanding ADHD and autism? Emotional intensity is a neurological feature, not a flaw or character problem. Recognizing this can change how families, educators and clinicians interpret behavior. Moving from overreacting to understanding the biological roots of emotional dysregulation. Interventions like mindfulness, cognitive strategies and sensory support can help reduce emotional overload and improve daily functioning. If you have ADHD or autism, your intense emotional responses are valid. They are not imaginary or signs of weakness. For parents, teachers and therapists, understanding the biology behind emotional overload can help create strategies and environments that reduce stress and support well-being. And for everyone, it's a reminder that the brain is wired in unique ways and emotional intensity is just one part of neurodiversity. ADHD and autism are not just about attention or social skills. The way the brain processes emotions shapes every interaction, every stressor and every success or failure. Understanding this helps us support neurodiverse brains instead of judging them. This is Clinical Breakdown, where we decode the neuroscience behind behaviors and experiences you might see every day. Hit subscribe for more science decoded and tell me in the comments down below. If you could turn down the intensity of your emotions, would you? Or is that intensity part of who you are?